Throughout our history, ordinary people have done extraordinary things. Illuminating our potential. They inspired movements. Created the impossible and destroyed the indestructible. Ordinary people chose to change the world, chose to dream, to build, to hope, to always hope. And if there's hope for one of us, there's hope for us all. Now it's your turn to reimagine civilization and build something you believe in. fans, on behalf of all of us here at Firaxis Games, we'd like to welcome you to a first look at the next chapter in our Civilization franchise, Civilization VII. You know, looking back 30 years ago, Civilization was created during a time when we were still learning what games could really be. We were searching for that next big challenge to take on, which led us to thinking, what could be greater than putting the entire history of the world into a video game and make it fun. Three decades later, it's because of your passion, your love for Civ, that we're still here today. In every game of Civ, you've gone on a journey to build an empire to stand the test of time. And now the journey continues. Prepare to take just one more turn on February 11th, 2025, when we launched Civilization VII across PC and consoles, all on day one for the first time in franchise history. This is by far the biggest, the most ambitious game we've ever made at Firaxis. It represents a significant gameplay evolution for the Civ franchise, and it's a game we plan to support for many years to come. Today, you'll learn about the vision for the game, the driving force that inspired our biggest new feature, You'll see your Civ world brought to life like never before, and you'll discover why Civilization VII promises to be a revolutionary new chapter in this franchise that we all love so dearly. Please enjoy. Civilization is the foundation of Firaxis. Whether you've been playing since the MS-DOS days or have joined us more recently, we're so grateful for your continued passion and support. When you walk around our studio, you can feel the energy and excitement. You can see how inspired our people are to come in and build the next Civ game. Civilization is the ultimate historical strategy game. Your goal in Civ is to build an empire to stand the test of time. You select a civilization led by a famous historical leader and guide your Civ's journey across the entire span of human history. You shape your empire piece by piece, from what technologies you want to research to what civics you want your society to uphold. And you compete with others on the world stage, engaging in diplomacy, negotiating alliances, and sometimes going to war. <laughs> In every civilization game, your empire has always been represented by a single civilization. You play through the entire span of history as that one civilization. This time around, we want to take you on a new journey. For the first time ever, in Civilization VII, the story of your empire isn't just that of a single civ, but several connected together through time. At the dawn of each new age of human advancement, You'll select a new Civ to represent your empire. You'll build on and carry forward your previous achievements while unlocking new gameplay bonuses to reinforce or pivot your strategy. And by the end, you'll have forged a unique path through history. To show you what we mean, let's take you through the story of one such empire.
It is the dawn of a new age. The age of antiquity, where humanity begins to take its first steps into the annals of history. The great pharaoh, Hatshepsut, leads the civilization of ancient Egypt. Among the arid desert lands and a winding river, the seeds of our people are rooted in sand and water. To discover what treasures and dangers lie beyond, a brave scout begins to survey and map the surrounding lands. As our population grows, a new granary is built to store food for hungry mouths. Its location decided, a new district is formed and construction begins. With more food available, our people look to make improvements to the land. An ancient fruit ripe for cultivating is spotted. Dates will provide more sustenance for our citizens and their sweetness will make the people happy. A plantation is constructed to harvest this valuable resource. Over time, our city continues to grow as more urban and rural developments spring forth. We pursue advancements in technology to serve the needs of our people. Breakthroughs in irrigation further enhance our food production, while sailing unlocks our ability to traverse the nearby waters. It is now possible to journey further and expand our empire. With a deft hand, our scout travels along a navigable river. Their tenacity is rewarded with the discovery of a breathtaking series of waterfalls. This natural wonder of the world attracts the imagination of our people, and brave settlers begin the long trek to claim new land for the Egyptian empire. A new town is established near the majestic falls. A town starts from humble beginnings and is initially used to gather nearby resources. Perhaps in the future, this town will grow large enough to specialize and gain its own identity as a city. Our expansion does not go unnoticed. A foreign scout is spotted, revealing the existence of a nearby independent power. Initial hostilities are tempered over time, as friendly relations begin to form. And peace does not dampen our ambitions. Our people strive forth to create great wonders the world has never seen before. As we continue to expand and explore the continent, we encounter new civilizations. They are eager to engage in a bartering of ideas and goods. Trade routes are established, providing mutual access to each empire's resources. But our rapid growth does not go unnoticed. Our neighbors' ambitions rival our own, setting us on a collision course. War is no longer avoidable. A great army is raised, led by formidable commanders who spur our forces quickly across the land. Spears and arrows make way for iron swords and armor. The battles are fierce. We emerge victorious. But the challenges of this age have shaken our mighty Egyptian empire to its core. The world changes. We feel the pages of history turn as the age of antiquity comes to a close. A new age of human advancement approaches. The age of exploration. A new age brings forth new challenges 
and new opportunities. New technologies to research. New resources to acquire. New lands to explore. If we are to take on the challenges of this new age, we must adapt and select a new civilization to represent our empire. One that is better equipped to take on the challenges of the exploration age. This new civilization builds on top of its past legacy and our actions in this age will inevitably influence a future yet to come. As we evolve, so too do our neighbors. The stage is set. A new age begins. Will you follow a path set by history? Or will you pivot and forge something anew? What kind of empire will you make? What strategies will you pursue? The future is yours to create. In Sid Meier's Civilization Seven. The journey of Hatshepsut, brought to life by our wonderful new narrator, Gwendolyn Christie, is just one potential path you can take in Civilization Seven. This is made possible by our biggest new feature, ages. Ages are inspired by a transformational idea for Civ, that history is built in layers. This idea is a way of understanding how civilizations have grown, changed, and evolved over time. Think of the first civilizations of the world as creating an initial foundation. As a civilization grows, new layers are added to that foundation in the form of things like technologies, schools of thought, and cultural norms. At some point, civilizations, faced with a crisis that divides their time, must evolve. When that happens, these past layers don't disappear. Instead, they now serve as a new foundation for the new civilization. As the cycle repeats, connecting the past, present, and future together. Instead of playing as one single civilization across every age, you'll evolve your empire into a new civilization for each new age. One that is suited to take on the historical challenges of that time. Every age is designed to be like a historical sandbox, as a way to really immerse yourself in that time. Almost everything inside an age is exclusive to that age. That includes things like which technologies and civics you can research, what resources are available to be gained, which independent powers surround you, to even things like gameplay systems and civilizations all unique to that age. Having unique civs for each age is something we're really excited about. In the past, every civ needed to be balanced across a game that spans all of history. This naturally resulted in things like late era civs being strong in the late game, but weak early on. Now we can balance around the age itself. This means we can give every civ bonuses, units, and buildings that are always relevant and powerful. Having exclusive civs per age is also great for historical immersion. Every age feels like an epic showdown of some of the great powers of that time. We'll have three ages for you to play. The Antiquity Age, when agricultural societies begin to cluster into urban centers, forming the foundations of the first civilizations. The Exploration Age, when the desire for precious commodities from distant lands spurs empires to stretch across great oceans. And the modern age, a period of incredible technological growth and global conflict, where mankind goes from the development of the steam engine to the splitting of the atom. Every age can be played on its own or woven together into a full campaign. In past games, civs and leaders were always tied together and came as a package deal of agendas, abilities, units, and more. With civs being exclusive to ages, we're excited to introduce a new innovation for leaders. For the first time in franchise history, leaders are now selected independently from civilizations. 
You can now mix and match unique parts of different sieves and leaders, unlocking all new strategic combinations, staying true to sieves' spirit of experimentation. For players who want to stick to more historical pairings, a useful indicator will appear on the sieve selection screen. We're also taking the opportunity to expand who we consider to be a leader in Civilization VII. We'll continue to have traditional heads of state, such as Hapshitsit, but we're also excited to have new leaders in areas such as philosophy, religion, science, and more. Having leaders stay the same across ages helps bring a sense of who you're playing against in Civilization VII. It also gives you the opportunity to keep the theme of evolution going. As your empire evolves from one age to the next, it's important that your leader grows as well. All leaders now have attributes that can further specialize their skills. These attributes can be gained in a variety of ways, from completing narrative events to rewards for researching certain technologies and civics. Overall, leaders are getting a huge upgrade. They're more powerful, more varied, and more strategically interesting than ever. We cannot wait for you to discover your new favorite leader in Civilization VII. When one age ends and you begin an age transition, it is an incredibly exciting moment. You'll select a new civilization to represent your empire in the new age. You'll choose parts of your past civ to carry forward into the new one. And the game map literally expands, filled with new independent powers to befriend, new resources to acquire, and new discoveries to be made. During an age transition, there are a few factors that determine which civ you can evolve into. This includes any historical connections between your previous and future Civ, your choice of leader, and even certain gameplay decisions that you made in the past age. Every Civ plays differently. Across your game, you might want to stay as true to history as possible, only selecting Civs that have historical ties to each other. Or you might switch to Civs that fit your strategic needs. There are so many possible paths to explore, so many different choices you can make. The potential for strategy in Civilization VII is nearly endless. Something we hear often from players is about how when you play a game of Civ, you forget the world around you. Video games, more than any other medium, have this ability to completely immerse you in another universe. Whether it's through art, music, cinematic moments or language. Our goal is to bring your Civ world to life. Getting the look and feel for Civilization VII right is critical. So it's important to make sure we are capturing that through our art style. I spent a lot of time as a kid in museums, especially in the diorama sections. And being able to walk by and see these little miniatures that aren't moving, but there's a story told in them was something that I always found intriguing. Technology changes every time we put one of these games out, and each time we put one out, we can do more. And we're at a spot in the industry now where we've just got a lot of, a lot of tools and a lot of power under our belts to represent the entire world of civilization. We're hoping that the players can look into this game, see the diametric detail on this, and tell their own stories that they've never told before. Everything is going to fit together in such a different way than it has in the past from Civilization, and I think it's gonna give you a much more realistic version of the simulation that you're trying to create. We took a lot what we learned in the Civ 6 and learned from that, trying to open up some more spaces and everything, and we adjusted the tone from 6 a bit, and I think it's what our fans are, are looking for, and I think it's gonna be a, a lot of fun for them. It's something that nobody else is doing, and nobody but Firaxis can do. I think players will love how combat looks. We greatly expanded the variety of units in Civ 7. Units now constantly engage one another. You'll see and hear the clashing of swords and steel. Units have a higher level of fidelity than ever before. Everything from the little parts and pieces and details on the armor set to the entire representation of a whole army on a battlefield. I feel like this is gonna become your sieve. Like this is, this is the one, it has the look. <laughs>
Firaxis takes its representation of different cultures in Civ 7 very seriously. Language is a critical part of civilization. It's how people tell their story. This is important because we are trying to teach through this game, and it's important to our players. They want to see their cultures represented correctly. In many cases, some players have never seen their cultures represented anywhere else. It brings great pride and joy to be able to see themselves included in the history of the world. Music also plays an important role in bringing out the spirit and essence of each civilization. Every Civ has its own theme, and we're excited to share that Chris Tin, who composed the Grammy award-winning theme Baba Yetu for Civilization IV, and the main theme for Civilization VI, is returning for Civilization VII, and we cannot wait for you to hear it. Today represents just an initial look at what's to come in Civilization VII. We have so much more to share, from gameplay deep dives to first looks at new leaders and civilizations, to what you can expect from Civ VII post-launch. Sid Meier's Civilization VII releases on February 11th, 2025, and is available to pre-order today. Players who pre-order Civilization VII will receive the Tecumseh and Shawnee pack. And if you haven't already, be sure to create a 2K account and sign up for our Civ newsletter to receive the latest updates. Doing so will unlock the exclusive Emperor persona for Napoleon in Civilization VII. And as a special thank you, if you use that same 2K account to play Civ VI, you'll automatically unlock Napoleon's revolutionary persona in Civ VII. Check out our website at civilization.com for full details, and be sure to follow Civ for all the latest. We hope you enjoyed this first look at Civilization VII. The entire team at Firaxis has been working very hard to make sure we deliver a game that gives you more reasons to take just one more turn. As we welcome Civ VII into the Civ family, I think back to the legacy of Civilization, the 30 years of development, refinement, iteration, exploration of the millions of players that have contributed, of the billions of hours that have been played. I'm so proud to be here for this moment, welcoming Civ Seven into the family. February 11th, 2025 isn't too far away. We're excited to be taking this journey with you.